Breaking news, Atiku's camp urges Tinobu to resign over his Chicago academic record. So guys, we all know that we've been on this topic for a while. And tomorrow is the D-Day. The judge in the U.S. is going to rule over this case on whether the Chicago State University is going to release this record or not. Tomorrow is that final day. But you can see Atiku is so smart for him to start calling Tinubu to resign on time, even before the judge rules, you know, his final verdict tomorrow. Atiku is saying, Tinubu, you must leave office because we are not sure of the kind of certificate you submitted to INEC and you submitted it under oath. Can you imagine? Tinubu has said that the Chicago State University shouldn't release his academic record to avoid irreparable damage on his personality. So guys, let me allow you to listen to what Dr. Ted got to say because we are wondering why should the U.S. be delaying on this case? Why have they not released their final verdict even before now? Because Atiku needs this document to pursue his appeal at the Supreme Court. You know, one of the things the previous judge granted one of the prayers the previous judge granted Atiku was to interview Chicago State staff under oath because Atiku want to compel them to explain to, to him the person who signed a certificate in 1979 whereas that same person was employed 20 years after by the time the Chicago State University management staff are interviewed under oath, it will expose the rot that is happening in that university. I have a lot of friends in UK, in US, that have told me that that university is notorious for certificate racketeering. And you know, they said birds of the same feather flock together. That university is notorious for certificate racketeering. That is why someone who is employed today can afford to sign a certificate that was issued 20 years ago. And Atiku is trying to do damage to that university. That's why no staff of that university want to say anything on that oath. Because it could cost them their job because it could land them in jail because that school can be exposed beyond irreparable fashion. That's number one. Number two, when you talk about national security, if you have something on somebody and that person wants it protected at all costs, the person will do your bidding. I mean, if you watch movies, you will see people whom, because of a certain thing, a certain skeleton in their cupboard, people who have that, it's like blackmail. Let's just use it that way. If our president happens to be blackmailed by any other country because of information they have about him, that will, that may be an information that if that thing were to be made public, he should not be a president, don't you see that he's going to be at the beck and call of that person who is pulling the string? So that is a challenge. And like, like he said, in this era of new colonialism, now, we don't know, look at countries like Cameroon, look at countries like um, Senegal. We don't know what the colonial masters have on their leaders. That is why they can afford to do things against their people and the colonial masters are just okay. If that tells you that there is a string, those people, there is a string, a country like France is pulling, controlling some president like, like in Cameroon, like in Senegal, like Ivory Coast and all whatnot. So what the man I think is trying to say here is we, it won't be nice for Nigeria to be exposed in the same fashion and in the same manner. So that's, that's what I see there, and that's my, my thinking so far. All right, so um, the next thing I think we need to um, touch now is this same week, we, we heard about the governorship election tribunal that occurred in 
judgment that occurred in Kano State and then occurred in Enugu State. And we've heard how the judgments came out. The one of Kano State is already causing a whole lot of riots currently in Kano State. And a lot of people have been commenting and lamenting and trying to say that the judges were bought. Others are saying that the judges of the petition um, governorship election petitions tribunal in Kano State was harassed by APC to give the kind of judgment that they gave and all what not. But there is someone who did an analysis, something I want, if it is possible for us to, for us to um, show here, just that slide by one on BC Ekekwe. He, he gave a summary that I had also thought of, but it would be nice for us to have it there for those who could read while I point it out. For instance, now there is a pattern that I have seen here. When APC want to deal a blow to you, there is a method they use and to a large extent, it's like the judiciary always back them. You remember what happened in Emo State? How all of a sudden, from one word, there was a massive vote that the governor, the current governor of Emo State, brought to the Supreme Court and said, INEC did not include this vote because they didn't include it. They deprived me of the opportunity. And by the time the whole vote was counted, <laughs> it made him become get more votes than PDP. And that is how Ihe Dioha was kicked out of power. And Tohopo Zodima is now the governor. Now, look at what's happening in Kano. My people, please let us think about this thing. As much as 165,663 votes was deducted from NNPP. The court did not say that when they deducted 165,663 votes that either not stamped, signed, or dated, they did not tell us anyone that was deducted from APC, anyone that they deducted from any other party, APC, PDP, SDP, and even Labour Party. Remember that PDP participated in the Kano state election. Remember that SDP participated in the Kano state election. Remember that Labour Party participated in the Kano state election. Now, is it possible, my fellow Nigerians, that out of that 165,000 plus, that it was only NNPP that was voted? Because the court did not say that when they deducted that invalid 165,000 plus votes. They did not even mention that the vote of APC dropped by one vote. They did not mention that the vote of PDP dropped by one vote. They did not mention that the vote of Labour Party or SDP dropped by one vote. If you read the judgment, it simply says, even the, the APC lawyer simply said it that 165,000 plus votes was brought to the court that was not stamped, that was not dated or signed, and that that vote was deducted from NNPP. So the question Nigerians we need to ask ourselves is this, is it possible that as big as much as 165,000 votes, which were invalid ballot papers, became invalid, held by INEC, and they voted only one party. Think about that. It is important that Nigerians think about that. APC did it in Imo State and they got away with it. And that is why they are trying it again in Kano State. And that is why we are trying to say that when we allow crimes like this to be sustained, it emboldens the perpetrators to do it again and do it again and do it again. We may not have time to even talk more of what happened in Enugu State. When we have seen we have seen that we have seen that judges after judges, even in the so-called election petition tribunals, 
have been disqualifying people for certificate forgery. But Enugu State Tribunal decided that this time around, they will not disqualify anybody for NYC certificate forgery because according to their word, it is not a qualification to become a governor. But the court had firmly said, I'm waiting, Nigerians, I am waiting to see what the appeal court will say because this, part, this appeal court have already held it before that whether the certificate qualifies you or it does not qualify you, provided it is forged, it will disqualify you. Let's, I'm saying this today so that we Nigerians, we can keep our ears open and keep our eyes open and watch what will come from the appeal court. If they endorse what this tribunal has said, then Nigeria is completely finished. Because it means that these judges and these courts can be doing cherry picking. When they like you, they invoke this law. If they don't like you, they drop it. Because Supreme Court, appeal court, times without number, have nullified people's qualification simply because the certificate they tendered was not issued. This is a case that even the director general of NYSC said before the whole world that the governor came to him and that he told him, they told him, this certificate you're parading, we did not issue it to you. A law firm extracted a certified true copy from INEC, what was submitted. And these judges upheld the fact that that certificate does not qualify him. That as long as school certification, school cert is what qualify him, that this person is overqualified, having gotten master's, having gotten honorary doctorate degree, and gotten university degree, and gotten a law, firm, a law, law degree. But the person submitted a certificate that is forged. So this is the first tribunal we are hearing that can now discountenance the impact of forgery because it is not a qualified, the certificate that was forged is not a qualifying certificate. Whereas the appellant court that is above that level of court have held times without number that it does not matter whether the certificate qualifies you or not. As long as it is forged, it can terminate your opportunities. So this is like an alarm we are raising. Let's keep our ears open and keep our eyes open and see what the appeal court will do. If the appeal court sustains this judgment, then we can say <laughs> our judiciary is gone. If they nullify it, then we can say maybe this time around, the, the presidential is more important to them and they have done what they have done with the presidential, all right? But you can see what happened in Enugu State and Kano State. It tells you that our judiciary so far is like cherry picking kind of people. You took a vote. They said they brought it to you, INEC. Now they were able to compel INEC. Now that's another thing. This judiciary, these judges, compelled INEC to submit this. But our appeal court, which held the presidential election petition tribunal, could not compel INEC to produce what they used to conduct election. That is it. And secondly, that pooling unit they are condemning in Kano State, that pooling unit, is it on the IREV? If we go to the IREV, can we see that it is only NNPP that was voted there? That is another thing Nigerians have not pointed out because these judges completely boycotted everything that had to do with Beavers and IREV. Because if they have recognized IREV, then Nigerians will see that pooling unit and know whether indeed 165,000 pooling units 165,000 ballot papers, which is pooling units, because there is one pooling unit for one resource sheet. Whether there is 165,000 there, 
where only ANPP was voted. 